Hey everyone, Brian Marino here with Apex Software. And in this video, I'm going to go over the Define Area panel and how to add areas to it, how to determine what posts in the middle of your area when you define it, and also how to control where your dimension labels are placed. Um, so to get started, I'm going to come to my Define Area icon here on the left side. And when I click on it, it brings up a panel on the right. Um, if you don't have this icon on the left side, then that means you're using the legacy drawing style. So you're going to click on the draw area button and you'll get this panel fly out in the middle of the screen. Um, but otherwise everything will work the same and how we edit and how we adjust our auto post options. First off, you'll notice there's different categories. So we have GLA, GBA, basements, porches, garages, other non-calculated area and undefined areas. Um, so all of these are categories. If I select one of these category with the plus to the left, I cannot click the apply button. You cannot define an area as a category name. You have to click the plus to the left of it, select an area type below it, and then you will be able to click the apply button. Okay, so if anybody uh, is trying to define an area, their apply button is grayed out, that typically means you have a category selected, not an area below it selected. Okay, so that's one thing to keep in mind as you're defining your areas. Uh, another helpful indicator, if I select GLA1 first floor, you'll notice I have a blue box here with a light blue fill in it. So this is showing me a preview of the line style as well as any fill patterns that are set. So if I define my area as first floor, it's going to get this light blue fill pattern and this is the line color it's going to be. If I select second floor, there's no fill pattern uh, and it's a still the same blue line. Same with third and fourth floors. Um, so you can select an area, get a preview of what the area lines will look like before you use it as well. So it looks like our land has red lines. Okay. So that's what that is. It's showing you a preview of your line color and your fill pattern, if any, is selected. Below this uh, preview, we have auto post. Uh, I get a lot of calls on this. How do, I, how do I turn off the area name posting and the calculation posting in the middle of the area when I define it? This is what determines what posts in the middle of your area when it's defined. Um, so if I uncheck name and uncheck calcs, name will not post the area name. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop this in and define that as first floor. So if I uncheck name, the, the name first floor will not post and only the square footage would post. If I don't want the square footage either, I'm going to uncheck calcs. Okay, and when I uncheck calcs, now when I define this area, nothing will post in the middle and it will still give me the line color and the fill pattern that I have set but it's not going to post this information in the middle so I'm just going to drag and drop this in again and notice it disappeared because it redefined it now and it took on the properties of what I had set so that's how you can control what posts in the middle of your area if you only want the area name to post and not the square footage go ahead and check name and then when you define an area It'll only put the area name in the middle, not the square footage. Okay, another thing to point out on the auto post is dimensions. So you're probably going to always want to keep dimensions checked unless there's an area that you want to define and you don't want any dimension labels to post. To the right of DIMMS is a little drop down window. So we have outside, inside, and leave. So what that means, I have it set to leave, which means however I drew my area, that's how the labels are going to remain when I define it. And anybody using the legacy drawing style will probably want to leave this at leave. But let's say, you know, I want all my labels on the inside of the area every time, no matter how I draw it. If I set these to inside, and I'm going to go ahead and just define this area to the left, notice it popped all my labels on the inside of the area. If I set it to outside when I define that area, It'll pop them all to the outside of the area. So that's another tip. It doesn't necessarily matter if you drew one way or the other and your dimensions are all on the inside or the outside or they're mixed. When you define the area, whatever you have set over here is where they're going to post. So just know it's not super important that they're all aligned where you want them because it will automatically place them on the outside when you define the area if that's how you have it set. Okay. So I think that covers most of 
the questions I get on the area code table from this aspect. Now another question I get a lot is how do I add areas to my area code table? So now I'm going to go over that and show you how to add them. Um, there is a way to, you know, for example, let's say we had a covered porch. Okay, right now I don't have covered porch in my list. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag in the word porch and it defined that area as porch. And notice it took on the dashed line style that I have set for that area type. But let's say I wanted this to be a covered, show covered porch. So I'm going to come here to the pointer arrow, click on the word porch, and I'm going to come in and I'm going to type in covered porch porch up here and change the name and when I click off of it it will change the area name that posted in the middle of the area. Note this does also change what shows up in your calculation panel so if I change if you change a auto post label whatever you change it to is what will show up in the calculation panel. So I'm going to go to view view calcs and real quick I changed to covered porch it's now showing covered porch in the calculation panel. So that's important. You can change area names on the fly and they will reflect in the calculation panel if it's the auto post label that you're changing. So just know if you get like a one off area, you rarely ever get these. You don't necessarily have to add it to your code table. You can just manually change the name one time for that area and be done with it. Um, but I'm going to go back into define and let's say we want to add covered porch, covered patio, uncovered porch, uncovered patio to our code table. We don't have those options in here now. I get those all the time and I don't want to have to type it in every time. So the way we're going to add is I'm going to click on the edit button and when the define area panel opens um, this is a editing panel where I can come in and select my different area types and remove them, delete them, or add to them. So in this case, I want to add under the porch, patio, etc. category. So I'm going to click on the category name that I want to add an area under. Um, it'll have a little a minus or a plus to the left of it. I'm going to select the area type or the category that I want to add under. And then I'm going to click add at the bottom left here. Okay. And when I click add, it added an area type below it, named the same name as the header is named. Okay, so once I have that added, I'm going to come over here to the right and where it shows porch, patio, etc., I'm going to change it to covered porch. Okay, if I want a different line style or maybe since it's covered, I want to add a fill pattern. Let's say I want to add like a cross, we'll go diagonal cross. And then for the fill color, I'm going to do a light blue, maybe. So let's find a lighter blue color. And now I have that area type as an area in my code table. So if I look over here now, covered porch is an option. So I want to keep my porches all together. So now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click down. And I'm going to, rem I'm going to put covered porch below porch. That way they're both by each other. Okay, and then I'll add one more, and I will call this one Uncovered uncovered Porch, and I won't add a fill pattern to it. Um, I'll just leave it that way since it's not covered, and I'll move that down below Covered. So now I have Porch, Covered Porch, Uncovered Porch as an option, and we'll do the same for Patio. So I'm going to select the category name. I'm going to click Add. I'm going to select the one I want to change and we'll go Covered Patio. And I will move it down. And then I'll select here, click Add, and I'll do a unco Uncovered Patio. And then I will move that down. All right, so now I have patio, covered patio, uncovered patio, porch, covered porch, uncovered porch, wood deck, and balcony. Um, so once I'm happy with all of that, um, I'm going to click the apply button. All right, and now if I look at my porch list, I have a lot more options here now. 
And so from this point forward, I'm not going to have to type it in manually. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop this in and redefine that. And notice it took on the fill pattern. Um, covered patio, no fill pattern, but still takes it on, shows the area name. Anyway, I just wanted to put this video out quickly to kind of give you all some information on how to adjust your areas, adjust what post, adjust fill colors, fill patterns, things like that. So you're not having to edit a bunch of stuff after you're done drawing. You can just define it and it get, takes the properties you want it to have. All your sketches will look uniform and everything will look clean. I hope everyone found this helpful. If you have any comments, feel free to drop them in the comments section below. If you know anyone this would help, feel free to like, share, subscribe. Otherwise, I will catch you on the next one.